we've been working in, in the antibody engineering field for almost two decades here at Fox Chase Cancer Center. Our primary target for a number of these years has been HER2, also known as HERB2 or HER2 new. My name is Greg Adams and I head an antibody engineering laboratory at Fox Chase Cancer Center. HER2 is a cancer marker that's present on a lot of tumors such as breast cancer and uh, present at high copy number, uh, making it a, a, a promising target. The problem is, is that HER2 is also present on normal tissues such as normal breast, the heart, and a number of other tissues. And when you target HER2, particularly with a cytotoxic molecule conjugated to the antibody, you can get toxicity of these normal tissues. We decided to try to develop a molecule that would circumvent this problem by targeting two different targets, not just HER2, but HER2 and a molecule that's often overexpressed with HER2 on the cancer. And we selected HER3, and HER3 was selected because it is a, the preferential partner for HER2 while in terms of signaling and promoting cancer cell growth. So our research was interested in targeting uh, receptors on the cell surface that are important for normal growth, but when they are overactive, they can form cancer. And in particular, we're interested in targeting two receptors, HER2, which is the target of a uh, widely used monoclonal antibody known as Herceptin that's used to treat an aggressive form of breast cancer, known as HER2 positive breast cancer, and its family member, HER3. Together, these two receptors form what is considered to be the most oncogenic uh, heterodimer or pair of receptors from this family and are able to induce cancer. My name is Matt Robinson. I'm an associate member at the Fox Chase Cancer Center and my research is based on developing antibodies for the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. ALM is the bispecific molecule that Eva Horak, working in my laboratory, built from the single chain antibodies that, that came from Jim Mark's laboratory at UC San Francisco. Uh, she selected a arm of the antibody, the HER2 binding arm, that had a moderately high affinity for HER2 and a low affinity arm for HER3, and uh, using genetic engineering, we come into DNA, DNA technology, cloned these two together with a linker that was designed not to be uh, cleaved by enzymes in the human body so that it would be intact over a long time in circulation. Shortly after Eva Horak retired from my laboratory, Matt Robinson joined my group as a junior faculty member. And one of Matt's major projects was to demonstrate that ALM was capable of selectively accumulating on cancer cells that express both HER2 and HER3. So in order for HER2 and HER3 to cause the, the, the uh, problems in cancer, they need to, to come together or heterodimerize. And the goal of developing ALM uh, was to block the ability of these receptors to come together and therefore stop all the signaling that occurs downstream of them. In an effort to do that, we, did, we took advantage of engineered antibody fragments known as single chains to bind or to create a bispecific antibody that bound, binds both to HER2 and to HER3 in an effort to try and, and create a situation where the antibody would would prevent these two receptors from coming together. Tumors are a complex assembly of structures that include blood vessels, shown here in red, supporting stromal tissue, and cancer cells. The cancer cells are responsible for initiating the disease and are the targets of the majority of cancer therapies. Receptors found on the surface of cells, such as HER2 and HER3 that are shown here in red and blue, sense environmental cues and act as switches to control circuits that regulate cell growth and survival. Cancer cells often overexpress these receptors. This can lead to inappropriate activation of the circuits, uncontrolled growth, cancer formation, and therapy resistance. The HER3 receptor is found in two conformations on the cell surface, a closed form that does not bind ligand and an open form that can bind ligand. When ligands, depicted here as a gray ball, bind to HER3, it locks the receptor in an open conformation and leads to pairing or dimerization with other receptors such as HER2. This HER2, HER3 heterodimer is active and turns on circuits within the cell that can cause it to grow and divide. This is a case where too much of a good thing is bad. The bispecific antibody, 
ALM, was developed based on the hypothesis that it would specifically block the ability of cancer cells to form this HER2, HER3 heterodimer. This, in turn, would shut down the circuits that drive cancer cell growth. As academic scientists, we focus more on the identification of, of novel strategies and new concepts and, and, and new, new drugs. But we've learned over the years that if we do not protect the technology that we develop, no one will be willing to license it and build a commercializable drug out of it. So working with UC San Francisco, we patented ALM and the antibodies that composed it and outlicensed it to a pharmaceutical company known as Merrimack uh, up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Merrimack has taken our lead agent, ALM, and turned it into a drug by modifying the linker between the two antibodies and in increasing the affinity of the antibodies. We're thrilled to say that uh, ALM, ALM's next generation molecule, MM111, will be entering first in human clinical trials in the summer of 2009 here at Fox Chase Cancer Center and in Texas.